subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 11th of January. People swamp markets even as India reports more than 150,000 new COVID-19 infections. UN launches biggest ever appeal for single country of 4.4 billion dollars for Afghanistan. and heavy snowfall poor roads and no transportation paralyzed life in gilgit baltistan and now for all the details despite curbs and curfews india on tuesday reported more than 150000 coronavirus cases though the tally was a bit less than the previous day's figure the federal health ministry said in a report meanwhile markets across india remained flooded with people as the country is struggling to save off the rapidly spreading omicron variant of the deadly virus Rising cases of coronavirus, especially Omicron variant in India, have failed to deter crowds in the market for festive shopping, concerning healthcare experts and authorities. Hindus across India will celebrate Makar Sankranti, a festival dedicated to sun god, and markets across the country were seen swamped with shoppers despite the rising cases. Mega cities like New Delhi and Mumbai have been seeing a rapid spike. which the experts believe would start to plateau in the beginning of march rest of india arth pad sutra model uh, will be reaching the peak around end of jan and beginning of february and as per the sutra model by middle of march uh, everything should be over but i think it will be over much before that only the decline uh, is bit erratic in uh, different places where it has gone up so Uh, taking everything into account maybe by end of feb or uh, beginning of march probably um, uh, that will be at least uh, will be out of this uh, present uh, wave health experts say the infection rate of omicron is very high as compared to the previous two waves in the country as one person infected with omicron can infect 25 people Considering the continuous surge in cases, state governments across the country have started preparing hospitals and other medical facilities in case of an unprecedented serious eruption. Omicron ka R not 20 se 25 hai. Ate agar COVID appropriate behavior ko follow nahi kia, aur ek asymptomatic aur mildly symptomatic Omicron ka patient 20 se 25 logon ko infect kar sakta hai. India reported 168,063 new covid infections on Tuesday less than the figure of 179,723 the previous day the health ministry said the country reported 277 deaths in the past 24 hours while the total case load stood at 35.88 million And in news from Afghanistan, the United Nations on Tuesday launched the biggest ever appeal for humanitarian aid for Afghanistan for 4.4 billion US dollars. The Taliban takeover has triggered an economic meltdown that has tipped millions into poverty and made Afghanistan one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. The UN launched the biggest ever appeal for humanitarian aid for Afghanistan for 4.4 billion dollars on Tuesday to stop it from sinking into a humanitarian crisis. Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths told reporters on Monday that the funding was an essential stopgap measure and the future of the country and its region was at stake. Griffiths also said that money would help the economy so that humanitarian agencies could operate in the country. This is a stopgap an absolutely essential stopgap uh, measure that we are putting in front of the international community today without this being funded there won't be a future we need this to be done otherwise they will there will be outflow there will be suffering the taliban's lightning takeover in august saw billions of dollars in afghan assets frozen overseas international funding which had supported 75% of government spending also dried up overnight 
Banks ran short of cash, millions lost work or went unpaid. The local currency nosedived while prices rocketed. Um, the key here is to stabilize the situation inside Afghanistan and uh, uh, including that of displaced people who are displaced inside their country. Uh, also to prevent a larger refugee crisis, a larger crisis of external displacement. The Taliban's victory marked the first time a sanctioned group took over the country and has presented the international community with a dilemma. The United Nations, World Bank and donors are looking for ways to inject money into the economy without going through Taliban authorities. And moving on, continuous heavy snowfall has brought life to a standstill in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. Locals say the heavy snowfall and bad road conditions are causing difficulties to travelers, making the region an accident-prone area. But the government is least bothered. Gilgit, Baltistan is known to be the coldest region of Pakistan. Ever since the region received its first snowfall last week, continuous heavy rainfall has brought life to a standstill in the illegally occupied region. The picturesque landscape of the region attracts many tourists during the snowfall season. However, locals said due to bad road conditions, many parts of the region have now become accident-prone spots. There are no transportation facilities as well, but the authorities are not bothered about the problems at all, they claimed. The conditions are very bad. Continuous snowfall in Gilgit, Baltistan has also led to road blockage and suspending electricity supply in many parts of the region. Locals have also time and again claimed that the tourism industry in the region has been facing a severe crisis due to the government's apathy to develop roads and other basic infrastructure in the illegally occupied region, which has kept it out of bounds for even domestic tourists. In news from Nepal, Nepal has started vaccinating children aged 12 and above against COVID-19 with Moderna's vaccine as the infection fueled by the Omicron variant Crips, the Himalayan nation. Nepal has started inoculating its population in the age group of 12 to 17 years after a spike in coronavirus cases. Bhaktapur district in central Nepal became the first district to start the inoculation drive. In coordination with local bodies, Moderna vaccines are being administered to students aged 12, 17 years at various schools. Nepal reported 1,357 new cases on Monday, the biggest single-day jump since September last year, taking its total to 833,946 since the pandemic began. Its death toll from the coronavirus is 11,606. <laughs> The adjoining district of Kathmandu and Dalitpur are also expected to inoculate the large number of children through the vaccination drive from Tuesday. Nepal has provided two shots of COVID-19 vaccines to 37% of its population of 30 million since an inoculation drive began a year ago. Nepal has also banned large public gatherings and closed schools for nearly three weeks. Authorities hope the closure of schools will help break chains of infection amid fears about the rapid spread of Omicron variant of the virus. 
And moving on to news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has asked China to help restructure debt repayments as part of efforts to help the island nation weather a worsening financial crisis. Sri Lanka has to repay about $4.5 billion in debt this year, reports suggest. Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa asked China to help restructure debt repayments as part of efforts to help the South Asian country weather a worsening financial crisis, as he met Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Colombo on Sunday, the president's office has informed. Sri Lanka has benefited from billions of dollars in soft loans from China, but the island nation is currently in the midst of a foreign exchange crisis, Today, placing it on the verge of default, according to analysts. Over the last the decade, blockchain. China has sent Sri Lanka over 5 billion US dollars for highways, ports, an airport, and a coal power plant. But the critics charged the funds were used for white elephant projects with low returns, a charge China denies. Sri Lanka has to repay about 4.5 billion US dollars in debt this year, starting with a 500 million dollar international sovereign bond maturing on January 18. A 1.5 billion dollar yuan swap from China helped the island boost its reserves to 3.1 billion US dollars at the end of December. Sri Lanka is a key part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, a long-term plan to fund and build infrastructure linking China to the rest of the world, but which others, including the United States, have leveled a dead trap for smaller nations. A cold wave in parts of northern India continued to make life difficult for the residents on Tuesday, while fog reduced visibility early in the morning. People were seen wearing multiple layers of clothing and some of them set bonfires to keep themselves warm. Cold wave in parts of North India continued to make life difficult for the residents on Tuesday who were seen taking precautions to save themselves from the bone biting chill. People travelling complained of low visibility early in the morning in the national capital New Delhi, Ludhiana and Kanpur cities as fog enveloped the northern part of the country. Snowfall in states like Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh has a direct impact on other northern states like Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. Bonfires and hot drinks provided some respite to people shivering from the cold. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions such as North America, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes. And moving on, in a bid to revive the rich cultural heritage of India's Jammu and Kashmir, authorities in the Union Territory have organized theatre shows in the valley. Despite harsh winters, scores of theatre lovers are rejoicing the performances that are showcasing the history and tradition of Kashmir. Amid the harsh winter months in India's Jammu and Kashmir, theatre is one thing that has enthralled the art lovers of the Union Territory for years. In Kashmir Valley, which has been struggling for long amid an armed militancy, theatre plays a major role to ease the minds of people. As the region comes back to normalcy amid COVID-19 pandemic, the theatre lovers are finding their feet again, with artists evolving original plays to set the tone for the revival of Kashmiri theatre. Uh, literary and cultural activities hain unko zinda rakhe aur harkat aur hararat jo hai wo wadi mein barqarar rahe usi silsile ki kadi ke taur par aaj ki peshkash bhi thi aur academy ki ye koshish rahegi ke sardiyon mein jo mausmi jumud tari hota hai uska asar hum pe na ho aur ek jo hararat hai usko jari rakhte hue hum aisi activities jo hai aainda bhi karte rahenge Authorities and performers say that theatre shows have also helped them to reduce mental stress amid the COVID-19 pandemic 
and say theatre is an escape for people from their regular hundred routine work. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.